What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. And today we are doing part two of our, geez, I guess two part series about investing in watches, specifically military watches. On Tuesday, we talked about the different kinds of investors in the watch market, and we gave an example of the journey a watch takes on its way to uh, the market's awakening, the journey a watch takes to its price explosion. And today, we're gonna be applying that logic to the military watch category. So if you haven't seen part one, I highly suggest you do because it lays all the foundation, but now we're gonna get down into the dirt. So let's do it. Boom, watch fan. Now, let's take the same principle and move it into today's specific conversation, that of military watches. The entire military watch market has a grandfather. That's the Rolex Military Submariner, reference 5513, 5517, and there was a double reference 1317. These watches, while equal to any other vintage Submariner in overall build quality, were incredibly interesting. They were made to mil spec, specifically from Rolex. Broad sword tritium hands, a tritium T on the dial, fixed spring bars to assure the wearer that it was safe and fastened on the wrist. This is an interesting watch. And while the military Submariners, they were certainly regarded as a cut above average vintage Submariners, they were for quite a few decades, fairly attainable, uh, not the hot topic of conversation. But then, and it seems to be in the 2000s, the watches began to increase exponentially in price. Now, well over 100, even $150,000 at auction. These watches were always what they were. They were always as cool as they are today, but today, they've been given attention. They've been romanticized. And that's how markets change. So maybe you don't want to spend $100,000 or $150,000 on a military submariner, but you are, as I am, and I can't see how anyone couldn't be, interested in this complex, you know, tool history of, of military spec watches. There are other pieces out there from even top tier brands, very interesting, of high quality, and believe it or not, way undervalued, well under $10,000, even under $5,000. That while, of course, these watches I'll get into in a second, they're certainly not cheap, it's not chunk change. But, and mark my words, I think that every watch we're about to talk about is between 30 and 60% undervalued, which is pretty significant. So, let's start listing them off. By the way, if any of you out there kind of may wish that they bought a mil sub back in the 80s when they were, let's say, a tenth of the price now. Like this video, just for good measure. Number one, and the most affordable, the Hamilton W10. Commissioned in the 1970s by the British MOD, the Military of Defense, these watches share a lot in common with the mil sub. Of course, they feature a different case, a tonneau case, but it was that same equation of, of durability and reliability that was applied to the mil sub, was applied to the Hamilton. And these watches can be found under $1,500, which is kind of insane. Number two, the Bund, a pilot's flyback chronograph. It was commissioned by the West German Federal Defense Force and originally manufactured by a company called Leonidas and then later by Hoyer in the 1960s and 70s. These pieces, these oversized, I think incredibly well-designed, complicated watches are legitimate pieces of the Cold War. And most of them can be found for under $5,000. And unlike Hamilton, and I love Hamilton, nothing wrong with the brand, absolutely adore it. We're talking about Hoyer now. We're talking about, uh, you know, certainly a step or two up, specifically in the vintage world, on the brand hierarchy. These watches are incredible opportunities. And yes, we do have one available in the Theo and Harris watch shop. And while I certainly often prefer to wear Cartier watches, very small, dainty dress watches, I have often found myself just admiring this piece, specifically that wide matte bezel. I can't get enough of it. Number three, the Magitech. One watch commissioned by the Czech Air Force in the 1930s by three companies, 
Longines, Eterna, and Lamania. These watches have an incredibly distinctive design and, like we're seeing with most of these military watches, are much larger than typical vintage watches. And these cases, in this cushion square shape, wear extremely well, um, certainly on the big side. And Eterna Magitech was actually one of the first watches we ever listed in the Theo and Harris watch shop way back. I uh, haven't owned one since, but uh, the fact remains, under $5,000, and again, it, it changes because of the condition, things like that, but most often under $5,000, even around the threes sometimes, incredible, incredible value. We're talking about watches that are at this point 90 years old, watches with provenance that are interesting and unique, incredible opportunities, uh, I feel. And finally, number four, which also doubles as number 16, the Dirty Dozen. Nearly identical watches commissioned by the British just at the end of World War II in 1945. Buren, Sima, Eterna, Grana, JLC, Lamania, Longines, IWC, Omega, a Record, Timor, and Vertex. The value of these watches, of course, again, depends on one, the brand, and two, the condition. But each and every one, from, from you know, JLC, which is certainly the most significant, and to, to Timor, which is maybe the more approachable, because it doesn't have that brand equity, they are all worth owning. And again, prices do vary, but you're talking between, let's say, two and $4,000 in so many cases. Uh, and when I say so many, I mean so many. Forget, these watches were heavily manufactured. Which brings me to my next point, which is relevant to the entire conversation we just had. We're talking about investing in watches. One of the key elements that I stated in the beginning was when the demand for these watches outweighs basically the supply, the market. Military watches, by and large, are not uncommon. So don't think that you're gonna go on eBay right now, pick up a watch, and you're gonna make money tomorrow. That's not how this works. If there were four in the world, then yes, of course, you'd make a score. That's not the case. You're not going to be able to you know, aid in the manipulation of a market. You're not gonna go make $10,000 today. It's just not gonna happen, but that doesn't mean these watches aren't worth owning. They absolutely are. These are not reissues. These are not inspired by. These are the real deal. Like I said, and I stand by it, I think that all of these watches, up and down the line, have 30 to 60% room for growth in them. But not tomorrow, and not the next day. We could be talking about months or years. So does that make them a good investment? Financially, I don't know. It depends on who you ask. I think a truly great meal with great friends is a terrific investment, an investment in the happiness and the quality of my life. So as I'm sure you can tell with luxury items, I'm, I'm certainly a little bit liberal in how I view an ROI. But the fact remains, I highly recommend all of you geeks out there to take a closer look at some of these relatively affordable military watches before, and it is quite possible, it's too late. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all soon.